Our next team is called Green Navigate, and they are made up um, for, of Chevening alumni from Indonesia. The presenter will be Dito Adesuryo, and the questions will be answered by Anissa Inda Pratiwi. So without further ado, we will hand over to Dito. Thanks, Kate. Um, good evening from Jakarta, you all. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everywhere you are. So we are a group of five from Green Navigate, and we would like today to present our policy proposals on integrated monitoring system for renewable energy financing. So we will start from the challenge. This year, Climate Finance Forum put strong emphasis on climate financing for the first time while Indonesia will take the G20 presidency next year. While in the national level, Indonesia has also just recently updated its NDC by targeting significant renewable energy share in the medium and long term. It's a massive challenge to scale up renewable energy in power sector in Indonesia. This is cannot be done by our own efforts, but also involving robust collaborations on investment okay. and climate finance. As would we are in a session, this I think that I can no, I'm still there, but I can from our research, yeah. although Indonesian government has established a few yes. numbers of climate finance platforms in recent years, however, a recent survey has shown several challenges. It's lack of project pipeline as its number is still limited. Next, it's also about lack of suitable financing instruments at, as it cannot compete commercially with conventional energy sources. It's also about lack of familiarity, which creates barriers and limited access from businesses and investors to make green investment come to. Reflecting these circumstances, we set up our policy proposals, which is, next slide, please. The solutions come up with integrated monitoring system for renewables finance. In our objectives, first, transparency of renewable ecosystem finance flows should be increased, addressing the growing interest of investors and businesses in renewables power development. Second, identify mine trends, sectors, and project pipeline will be essential to combat lack of familiarity on renewables investment projects. In our scope, we would like to propose the creation of one-stop integrated monitoring system for finance flows, which will focus on four Indonesia's climate funding platforms, which are one, Indonesia Environment Fund, two, the SDG one, and number three, Geothermal Fund, and number four, Green Suku, or Islamic bonds. Our policy analysis and the proposed tool will be expected to bring impacts to a more familiar climate finance informations, which will affect and provide more appetite across sectors. This, this will cover impacts also on jobs, higher investment, and higher ease of doing business, as you can see from the slides, while in the next years and in the coming years, there are more uh, upscale capacity of renewables that can bring or jobs, for example. And it can bring also uh, a, a more enhanced impacts on uh, multiple SDG pillars. In the next slide, please. So yeah, our policy proposal on integrated monitoring system will be helped by a useful dashboard, as you can see in the slide, that will contain a few cluster of essential informations, such as the basic data and also the share of fundings and the possible financial platform that can help investors and businesses. Then next slide, please. We will walk to the implementation. One minute remaining. Comprehensive analysis, output, which is the fiscal policy idea commission itself. The output of our dashboard will highlight the finance board. We expect it to contribute in the government renewables ambitions in new investments and projects. And this will be done in consultation with various stakeholders. And also for the funding support, this initiative will be generated by collaborative scheme 
either with the state budget and also will be assisted by collaborations with international climate funds. That's all from Green Navigate. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. Again, fascinating pre presentation and um, exceptional timekeeping skills. Um, really, really great at using the time efficiently. So well done for that. Um, panelists, over to you. Is there a question for the Green Navigate team? Yeah, so uh, if I may ask a question. So first, Frank, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, and uh, I would like to ask, um, you mentioned the impact. So can I ask how do you, what is the indicator to measure the impact? And also more important, how do you measure the longevity of the impact for the project? Yes, uh, Joanna, thank you for your excellent question. As you can see from our presentation that the impact for the long term means not only a particular uh, impactful in one side, for example, in renewables development itself, in enhancing uh, renewable capacity in power sector, but also in several activities and programs such as uh, green jobs creations, ease of investment, and also um, more access to uh, clean energy. As you can see, that's uh, representing the pillars of SDG, such as SDG 7, SDG uh, 13, SDG 11, and SDG 9. So uh, for example, I, I, I will give you one example in jobs. Uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a recent forecast uh, created by an energy economist, uh, if uh, Indonesia can enhance one gigawatt renewables within five years, that means uh, across sectors, multiple sectors in the, in the Indonesian economies, it can generate uh, 22,000, around 22,000 uh, green jobs. So uh, that's on jobs. And also, for example, also in, in East on, of doing business that our policy proposal in this case will also uh, make green and climate financing pipelines that are available in Indonesia can also not only in, uh, not only situated in the silo, but will be more familiarized to private sectors and business, and also can be for startup, for example. So it, it can provide uh, more impact not only in one sector, but also in multiple sectors, and also in, uh, and also have a multiply multiplied effect in uh, in sustainable development goals uh, progress. That's Joanna from us. Greetings again. If I, if I may have a quick question for you as well. Um, where I, get yes. the I think it was yes. very, clear, very clear. With reference to Indonesia, do you currently have a measuring report and verification system at the national level? And how does this particular proposal integrate to the MRV system that may be in existence in Indonesia? Yes, David, thank you for your questions. It's a, it's a bit challenging for uh, an integrated monitoring system, particularly in, uh, in climate financing for renewables, particularly because there are some, uh, currently there are some separated initiative that, 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 that belongs to different entities. For example, the Indonesian uh, Environment Fund belongs to Ministry of Finance, while SDG1 belongs to uh, Ministry of um, Planning and uh, Geothermal Fund belongs to uh, uh, a public financing corporation under Ministry of Finance collaborating with Ministry of Energy. And it's a bit, it's a bit challenging uh, and complicated if we, for example, we count uh, how much the absorption and the use of climate financing in certain period, for example, in one year, because we have a different, and also maybe it, it could be uh, it could be double counting for the for the uh, for the use of climate financing. So in in this case, we uh, we come up with that solution in that dashboard uh, that we propose to you, and this dashboard will uh, will be embedded to the um, Ministry of Finance, which is fiscal, uh, in, in this case, fiscal policy agency as the national designated authority of UN climate finance. And this uh, more powerful position will create more stick and carrots 
for uh, different entities across uh, Indonesian public policy makers to, uh, to, to, to provide a more integrated reporting uh, data and, uh, and system. That's that it we can share.